Yeah, good evening to you all. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Akwasi Usopi uh, Mbwate. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at uh, the University of Northwest in South Africa. So, so I'm actually trying to present a recent study that I conducted with respect to how political communication has been digitalized in, in West Africa. And, and so the title of my, my, my study is Digitalizing Political Communication in West Africa. And I'm trying to look at Facebook and Twitter as two examples of social media platforms in election campaigns and political practices in, in Ghana. I'm looking at two major political parties in Ghana with respect to how they, they use these new media platforms. So, so you, would, you would actually bear with me that, could you, could, you, could you move on to the next slide? That uh, digital technologies, especially social media, have become very huge instruments. They, they have become platforms that are actually changing the way and activities in many walks of lives. And you could tell from the happenings of now with regard to this coronavirus and how activities and conversations, conferences and all other things have been changed from physical to virtual meetings and other stuff. These highlight how social media or in a larger sense, digital technologies are changing many spheres of, of lives of people. Okay, and, and so politics, democracy, and elections are not immune to these new technologies. They, they, they as activities, are also making use of these platforms, especially social media, in, in a number of ways. And there are evidence to prove, according to a number of researchers, with regard to how these platforms have contributed to a number of activities globally, especially with respect to how these platforms contributed to the anti-Iraqi demonstrations in the United States, and also with respect to how these platforms were used by President Obama in his election and re-election as President of the United States. And then you could also tell from how these tools were used by groups in the Arab Spring, in the North Africa and the Middle East, how these tools helped or contributed in mobilizing and organizing people into those kinds of civic actions and political activities, activities among others. So, so, so you, could, you could tell that these, these platforms are actually changing dynamics in, 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 in how democracy, politics, and other stuff that are taking place all over the world. Could we move on to the next slide? So, so with, with, with regard to how, can we move on to the next slide? Okay, I think it's fine. With regard to how these platforms have provided opportunities, specifically in politics and political activities, a number of authors have highlighted key activities that have been able or, or sustained or enhanced as a result of the emergence of social media. And to them, social media platforms have enabled citizens to participate in a number of political discussions and also to contribute to the contents of messages on, on social media and also to to participate in collective decision making. And you would bear with me that social media has also given opportunities for the circumvention or perhaps elimination of the gatekeeping and filtering rules of traditional media platforms as a result of the features that make, make it possible to interact personally without necessarily relying on traditional media for sources of information and news, and which as a result could promote and generate some kind of relationships 
and support from 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 the electorates and the populations as well. So so you know we can say that yes. In specific terms, these platforms are aiding political communication. They are also helping political organizations, including political parties and politicians, to establish some kind of identities on online and give them the opportunity to interact with other democratic stakeholders, to be able to drum up support for their campaigns and activities, as well as raising funds and other staffs. Could we move on? So, 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 can we move on to the next slide? So I, the, yeah, I think it's just the, a little bit the of a lot. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So the, the, the study was actually conducted as a result of a number of challenges or problems or gaps that were noticed as a result of an initial excavation of literature in the field of social media appropriation in politics in the world, especially the global north and Africa. And from the initial research, I, I got to realize that Asia America and West Africa as compared to how they have been used in the global north. And as a result, there was the need for scholars, including myself, to contribute to bridging that gap through research. And according to other scholars, other Western scholars like Wenvik and Diaz, they argue that yes, social media has changed how political communication, democracy, elections, and other stuff in the Western world or in the global north. However, to them, these platforms have not been able to make any huge or dramatic impact with regard to how countries in South Sub-Saharan Africa have appropriated these platforms in their political and democratic activities. And so there was the need for a study of that sort to actually explore to determine or to argue or to corroborate whether the assertions by these scholars are true or otherwise. And thirdly, through the initial excavation of literature, I got to realize that even though research has been conducted on social media appropriation in politics, especially in Ghana, these studies have looked at general elections in the country and in certain cases looked at how politicians including party flag bearers and parliamentarians have used these platforms but none of them had conducted research with regard to how these new media platforms or these social platforms have been used in terms of intra-party elections with regard to intra-party elections that is elections that are conducted internally within respective parties to elect their flag bearers their mps or parliamentary candidates and their national executive officers who lead those parties so in view of that this study was undertaken to address those issues. So to be able to address all those issues, the study had to answer a number of questions. And could you please scroll? And so, so the first question that came up was to, to be able to distinguish between the role played in and the reason for using Twitter and Facebook by political parties in Ghana as different or distinct from other types or other forms of communication? That was the first question in mind. 
And the second question was also to look at how political parties in Ghana use these platforms, that is Twitter and Facebook, to engage with stakeholders in communication and activities, political practices, especially before, during, and after intra-party elections. And then the third was to look at how political parties and their stakeholders interact meaningfully on these two platforms, that is Twitter and Facebook, to create beneficial relationships between them to be able to advance the political goals, activities, objectives, agenda, and all those things. And also the, to, to determine that in the exchange of opinions, the nature and overall number or the quantitative aspect of messages and then the comments, the tweets, the likes, and all those things that are generated as a result of their post to the public. So these were the key questions that, would you move to the next slide? These were the key questions that we, we had to address to be able to, to, to fill in that gap that was, that was identified in the problem section. Good. So, so to be able to address the questions and problems and other things, the study had to be underpinned by a number of theories. Okay. And, and so the first theory that the study adopted was the, or the concept was the technology appropriation model. And, and the technology appropriation model speaks or talks about how technology is adopted and adopted by, peop by people, organizations, or individuals. It actually studies or tries to de de determine how the designs of particular technologies could motivate people to make use of those platforms. And as a result of making use of those platforms, how these platforms or tools could become part of their daily lives and activities, how they, they appropriate these technologies as part of their, their lives. Yes, and by using this technology, the study was able to explain or probably situate how new media technologies, how digital technologies, especially social media, have been used by political parties and their audiences. Make them adopt and adapt these platforms as part of, of their daily activities, their daily life, their daily routines. Yeah, so that was the reason for choosing that particular particular theory. The second theory was the theory by Zwanig and Hans originally, and then developed by other, other, other scholars as well. And that is the relationship management theory that tries to look at how organizations could mutually beneficial relationships between their organizations or in, in, in other contexts, individuals and their publics through mutually beneficial communication or engagement. That is the exchange of information between stakeholders instead of just passing information to, to audiences without seeking or eliciting feedback from them. And then the last framework was also the agenda setting theory. And so, 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 so with the use of the relationship management theory, the study was able to, to demonstrate or to put into context how, how social media as a result of giving direct engagements and opportunities for interpersonal conversation, even though there are no physical presence, how those interactivity through those platforms would create some kind of opportunities for people to establish through those communications a sort of relations that could be built and nurtured and then eventually transform into food or something of that sort. And to support Which 
could be used for the platforms as issues discussed to the party and then brought forward for discussions with the public rather than relying on the media to see through information that are channeled to them, they made public. In this theory, the, the, the study was able to, to, to social media as, a, as examples of digital tools could provide access for political parties to interact directly, interpersonally, even without presence, to advance their objectives, their goals, without necessarily relying on the media, the media to put forward those kind of agenda or agendas for, for them. Good. So the study employed a mixed method approach and it tried to triangulate qualitative and quantitative techniques. And in so doing, I tried to collect data or qualitative data through interviews with, with communication officials of political parties over a period. And then after the interviews with political party officials in their communication department, I, I did a content, a quantitative content analysis of the various calls that were made over a period. Could you move on? Over a period, that is a period between or the, 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 the period of elections of the two political parties, when the two political parties were actually organizing their intra-party national executive elections to elect their national executive officers, their chairman, their organizers, and other staff. So I, I chose the period of that, 17 days. I, I, I selected seven days prior to the elections, and then three days during the elections, and then another seven days after the elections. And then gathered data from Twitter and Facebook daily, recorded through a screen, a screen capture, capture every day, captured it and then analyzed the contents and then put them into different categories to determine what kind of messages are put by these political parties on their platforms and then the responses they get from those messages they put there. And for the period, for the 17 day, day, day period that was sampled for data collection during the elections of the various political parties that were selected for the study, the, the, main, the main party, which is in government now, the New Patriotic Party, could only post four news messages. Okay, the, the, their, their posts were largely focused on information provision. They just put out information to the public for them to know what activities and events are going out without necessarily eliciting some kind of strategic response to feedback from there. So in that regard, they posted four news messages, they had two uh, news releases, and then they, they, they never posted anything like a policy statement or any other thing. In terms of interactive chats, they were able, they, they were not able to make any interactive chats, and they were not able to put any chats that generated questions and then provided answers of that sort. They were able, only able to do one, and then in terms of how they were able to respond to inquiries and comments from their audiences, they, they, they never made anything of, of, of that sort to, to, to the recipients of their messages. And, and that multimedia, they did four pictures, audio, they didn't, and yes, and target. So you could see from the table that there was actually a, a, a minimal, minimal post on, on these platforms. And then the, the, the platforms and the message that they, they put on those platforms were usually, could you please move on, were, were usually in, in the forms of text, video, and pictures among others. Okay? And these political parties were focusing more on these platforms as a source of information provision tools where they use those platforms to send out news, press releases, rather than using those platforms in engaging 
in interactive communications, like through questions and answers, through responses to inquiries, through responses to comments and other stuff. They were just using those platforms as, as a means of disseminating information passively to, 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 the, to the public. And, and so they, they are not actually taking adequate advantage of the interactive features of social media, especially Facebook and Twitter, to converse and address issues that come up for discussion in public, especially traditional media. Okay, through a true a two-way symmetric approach where they could exchange information and ideas to know what is actually happening. So, so in conclusion, uh, political parties in Ghana could be said to, to be making some kind of attempt to adopt social media into their activities and practices in terms of how they try to use these platforms to connect with the public as a means of establishing their presence. So, so, so in other words, they have presence on the media or social media, they have Facebook, they have Twitter. And so they are just there to make presence and then send information out to the public. Okay, but they are not actually taking advantage of those interactive features. Okay, and then the minimal use over the period that is that was sampled for the study of these platforms and of these two major political parties, because uh, at at that particular time during the, during intra-party elections, parties usually have many activities at that time in terms of campaign activities, personal, and then that of the party and other stuff. So the thought was that at that particular time. If nothing at all, activities were going to be a bit increased as compared to what we had from, 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 from the study. So, 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 so in that case, we can see that the minimal, the minimal use of these platforms as a tool of just passing on information to the public prevents them from enhancing the mutual, sustainable mutual political relationships and supports towards election. They are not able to use these platforms to actually establish or develop some kind of relationships between elections, how they communicate and build that relationships, and through that sustained relationships, probably it could transform into votes at elections. So they, they've not been able to use those platforms to actually drive that mutual relationships and then support in terms of elections. Thank you.